the photography colors composition and lighting in the Batman 2022 designed to create a dark and atmospheric version of Gotham create some of the most beautiful movie scenes in my opinion. The budget of the film was around 200 million dollars. The camera and equipment used for filming were only available in Hollywood, but that didn't stop me for trying to create one scene myself. This is my attempt for which I only needed a computer and a free program blender. And the creation process looks something like this. When I was looking for an idea for the composition, I wanted to create an epic scene with wide view of the city, buildings closer to the camera, and of course Batman on the edge of one of them. I didn't find exactly what I was imagining in the film itself, but I did come across something very similar on Thomas Dubois' art station profile. I have everything I want here, I just want to add buildings closer to the camera and use references from the film for colors, lighting and vibe. The process of scene blocking is very simple if you stick to real world proportions and scenarios. The building is about 50 meters tall, Batman stands on the edge about 1.8 meters tall, while the cameraman is positioned slightly lower to make Batman look more dominant. In order to capture as much of the city as possible, it is necessary to use a smaller focal length. A panoramic camera provides an even wider frame but distorts the image, so this time I decided to stick with a perspective camera. I will set up the lighting later, but for start I use the sky texture that already comes with Blender. Blender 5 has a multiple scattering option which should be more realistic than single scattering, which is actually the old Nishita option. The human eye is specially trained to recognize even the smallest anomalies in people, so CG people is avoided unless there is no other option. In film production it is common to have real actor in front of a green screen, while the environment is created in CG. My idea was also to avoid a CG Batman, but unfortunately I don't have a Batman costume or a green screen, and even if I did, it wouldn't look as good as in the film. That's why I decided to take a small shortcut in this case. I took a small part of shot from a movie and built the entire scene around it. About 90% of the scene will be CG at the end. This method of combining video footage with CG elements is called VFX. It helps achieve realism more easily since part of the image is already real. By the way, this is just breakdown. You can watch the entire scene creation process step by step in this video. There are also project files and assets, but more about that at the end of this video. Video footage can be used in Blender as an overlay in the compositor, or it can be positioned directly in the 3D space, for example by projecting it onto a plane. Since we don't want to change the look of the video, we don't want shaders that react to light. We just need an emission shader. We can project the video footage onto a plane in several ways. We can use the UV map that we have by default. We have some problems here, if it is an animation of we move the camera, we get this. Every change to the mesh requires updating the projection, which is not the most practical, even with the use of the correct face attributes option. We solve some of the problems by using the UV project modifier. The camera is now a projector, so the projection doesn't change if we move the plane, but to make the projection as accurate as possible, more mesh is needed, which is again not practical. The third and best solution was designed by Ian and Nathan, who created the camera projection add-on, which is also very easy to use. It is enough to select the camera and click on New Camera Projection Node Group, the add-on creates a node group in the shader editor that we can use as a projector. Now the camera works as a projector and the mesh doesn't affect the projection, so it is always perfectly correct. Mm -hmm. 
Now we need to blend the CG elements with the live footage. Since the video plane is connected to emission, it is not affected by lighting. But the CG elements are affected by lighting as well as the settings in the shader editor. If we start without light and gradually increase it, we see that although the concrete part becomes brighter, it still doesn't match with the video plane. The video plane is connected to the emission shader, which emits light proportional to the brightness value of each pixel. Since the column is not completely black, the pixels have value greater than the zero, that means that it emits light. I need a value of around 0.025 here, and we see that this brings the CG and video plane significantly closer together. Of course, other settings such as roughness, specular and lighting also affect the CG part and that's where we need to play with the settings. But no matter how close you get, the scene will always be visible. I fix this by adding a concrete shader next to the emission shader and the gradient texture determines the transition between them. I control the gradient texture using this empty object. Since we set up the lighting that best blends the CG part with the video footage, we don't want to change that part. We want to change only the part that is visible in the camera in order to merge the background with the video footage. We can achieve this by using the light path node, which allows us to separate the part that affects the lighting from what is visible in the camera. Now we can simply take a sample from the video footage and make it visible in the camera. Now we only need to solve the seam on the right side to make it easier to fit buildings later. Here I use the same techniques as before. I also added a transparent shader to the shader that combines video footage with a concrete shader. This empty object combined with the gradient texture controls the transition. Now that we are done with part in front, it is time for part with city. My previous video on the channel covers this in 8 minutes, but you can also see the full process step by step in this video. However, at the end of this video I will play 1 minute summary of the previous video, so you can get an idea how the process of creating city like this looks like. In the end, true, I started with the idea of using warm palette with tones of red, orange and dark brown, like in the film, I wasn't happy with the result. After several tests I decided on a variation with a partially blue sky, to create contrast with the colors, I also talk about this in the step by step tutorial in the post processing part. There are much more details from buildings modeling, city lighting to post processing, but to keep this video short, I will stop here but you can watch the complete process in this video if you are interested in more. With a YouTube joint subscription, you can unlock all my step-by-step -step tutorials, over 20 of them, or about 100 hours of video material, divided in more than 500 videos. You can find them on post tab, where they are marked as member only. And of course you can find this tutorial on my Patreon page also, so links are in the description. And because this is a Black Friday month, I will give you a discount if you buy a subscription in the next few days and I will also uh, create coupon code for my Gumroad page if you want to buy this there. I decided to start from scratch and designed an asset just for these purposes. The city generator should be as simple and optimized, but on the other hand, it should have as much detail and control over all the important things. I first made low poly building models, so I had something to scatter into the geometry nodes. I will come back to these buildings later and add more details.
the large plane will be the geometry nodes holder, after that goes distribute points on faces and instances on points. At this point I realize it will be good to have control over one thing, how many small and how many large buildings we have. The GeoNode setup is now ready and how realistic and detailed the city will look depends on the models we create. Since we need to pay attention to optimization and we need a large number of texture variation, it is best to create one collage within which we have a large number of options that we can later use in the UV editor. This is roughly what the process looks like. And if you are interested in the whole process step by step, look for the tutorial on my Patreon, YouTube Join or Gumroad. Shaders are very important for creating details on buildings. I created between 4 and 5 shaders for each building. To get the lights inside the buildings, I created a new texture that is projected onto the cube located inside the buildings. It is important here that instead of UV projection, we use object projection, so that all the buildings have the same light scale and so that we can control the light scale later with one move. But I still want to control how much light is on, so to control that I created a brick texture that I multiply with an image texture. I want this option to be available as slider in the modifier tab. We can easily do this with drivers. I did something similar for the city. I applied this texture to the plane that holds the city so we can quickly and easily create a night city atmosphere. Although the buildings looks good now, I didn't stop there. Buildings are usually full of details on the roof. I had already created some assets for the roof before. Now I've imported some of them and created a new one, a simple geonode setup that scattered assets onto the roof. But not just onto the roof. I did the same with the AC units on the facades as well as the awnings and neon signs on the ground floor. That's all for this video, find the simple city generator in the links below. Thanks for your support and see you in the next video.